Welcome back, everyone, to the session on the core regions exchange program that the Secretariat is, um, is implementing. And um, this session will be moderated by our colleague George from the um, George Stiff from the Secretariat. Um, our colleagues also Carson Borkbeiler will be presenting the exchange, which is basically a one-to-one -one exchange on, on core phase out uh, between, between regions from, from the EU and also regions from the core um, Western Balkans and, and Ukraine. We'll have also the, the pleasure to welcome um, um, two, uh, two people from the Marshall Office uh, region uh, of Silesia and also the European Commission uh, Director General on the um, Enlargement. Uh, so um, we look very, very forward to, to hear from you. And uh, I see, George, you're uh, already on stage. And um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's your show now. You can, uh, you can start. Thank you very much, Olivia. I think also in the interest, since we're uh, running a little behind, I won't go into detail. You can see on, on the screen that we'll have Karsim Rotbader from the Secretariat. We'll have Darius uh, Stankovic from the Polish region of Silesia. And we'll have Ruta Baltaus from DG Near, who will be presenting. And we'll get into them later what they will be presenting about. My first presentation uh, will be from my colleague Karsten Rotbader, who is coordinator of Sustainable Resources, Climate and Resilience. Uh, we've been working together many years uh, on numerous aspects of the energy transition, in particular dealing with energy infrastructure and policy. He is leading the Secretariat's task on the exchange program and will now provide some details uh, to you. So you also should be aware that there will be a question and answer session following afterwards. So please go ahead and put your questions into the chat. Carsten, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, George. Next slide. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm very excited after working with you, George, and with many others. Uh, the Commission included um, the principals uh, uh, giving us feedback on this uh, piece uh, as part of the initiative here, the exchange program uh, for the core regions uh, from the Western Balkan and Ukraine, but also directed for the uh, coal regions in the European Union. Next slide. So let's open the, the curtain, so to say, after uh, half a year of work and uh, go into this, presenting quickly in a nutshell, what is this opportunity about? Next slide. However, you may find yourself uh, currently still within this one-way street where the coal phase-out is near, is, is uh, maybe decided by your national level, but uh, you haven't been uh, so involved in yet, at least not in the planning uh, phase and in the in the discussions. Uh, so there were strong uh, comments yesterday uh, in in the panel discussions. So I believe one piece of um, overcoming that one way street is certainly information and exchange, and this is what this exchange program is going to provide you. Next slide. So in a nutshell, and here you may be also mesmerized by uh, this wonderful photo related uh, to, to energy, which we all need, um, connecting here uh, from one to the other side, uh, from one to the other in order to create a bigger picture. This exchange program is a one-to-one -one exchange, as I said, for um, the Western Balkan and Ukraine regions, as well as um, regions from the European Union. We would like, with this program, to pair up um, the interest and expertise based on those two elements here, a direct one-to-one -one exchange with the goal of uh, fostering uh, and transferring knowledge and good practice of the coal transition, of uh, a just transition, building capacity of political leaders, of technical leaders, uh, but also uh, we will go into that uh, from various other stakeholders here connected. The approach which we would like to take is a, is a tailored approach towards your needs as regions. Um, we would like to develop with you the exchange agenda together. Um, therefore, we, we are looking forward to your ideas and your needs bottom up um, to be placed into the agenda and for us then um, to step by step and very structuredly go into details. Next slide, please. So maybe more concretely said, um, 
we are offering you through this program three options of exchanges. Um, the option of a long-term exchange, uh, where uh, two regions are paired and visit each other. Uh, this can take uh, indicative, uh, of course, uh, a longer period of time, so let's say a year, uh, but it also provides you the, with the opportunity to um, go into detail on several topics um, and in that sense, uh, creating a, a closer understanding of that particular region, let's say in, in, in Germany, that is uh, already undergoing the cold transition um, for a longer time, uh, paired with a, with a, with a region in, in, in Serbia, for instance. We are also offering a medium term exchanges. So that would be just one visit uh, and one exchange. Of course, here, the timing would be shorter. Uh, the topics would be less, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it would provide you with the opportunity to go in depth here uh, with with uh, particular stakeholders uh, that that are part of of the exchange here uh, on several topics, and then there is yet another opportunity which could be back to back to events like this if they would happen in physical formats, uh, where there would be a one exchange opportunity on a selected topic between uh, two regions here involved. Next slide, please. Maybe to grab um, whom are we targeting here more clearly, uh, the primarily target group of this exchange program is the subnational level. Is the regional, are the regional authorities in those countries where they, um, in, in those um, countries where they exist or and the, the local authorities. Uh, and here we um, would, however, not limit uh, the exchange and actually we would like to propose delegations uh, to be formed um, consisting out of seven seven persons and here that delegations can uh, these delegations can of course also and shall also consist out of uh, other stakeholders listed here such as uh, public utilities national authorities operators of public infrastructure, mining companies, universities, NGOs, and so forth. So a delegation shall be formed by you, suggested by you to engage with a delegation from another region. And in that sense, also have uh, the enjoyment of um, exchanging from different levels, from different perspectives and bringing this forward. Next slide. Who can join? This might be a very interesting and uh, crucial question. So priority of this exchange program is given to coal regions in the Western Balkans and Ukraine and coal regions of the European Union. However, um, they are applicant, they can apply. However, uh, they may also mandate um, other entities, local or regional entities, uh, such as a research institute, for instance, um, to apply for them um, and being backed by a letter of support. So that is another uh, opportunity, um, providing a little bit more flexibility. We are looking for regions that are, and give priority to regions that are um, currently under the coal transition or uh, are regions of uh, former mining activities. But we are uh, we would also like uh, not to exclude if that is your key interest as a region from the Western Balkan, for instance, or Ukraine to uh, look out for front running regions in the EU, um, for instance, going into the spa smart specialization um, regions or regions where renewable energy is uh, much deployed. So these uh, can be also considered, but um, are not necessarily our primarily priority. Next slide, please. Maybe explaining here uh, more about what you get out of this wonderful exchange program. Uh, what are the benefits? What uh, is the support that we are providing? Uh, first of all, we the program is resourced to uh, uh, to to fund uh, the travel and accommodation, uh, the study tours, 
um, so to say, uh, translation is also included in, in, in these exchanges uh, that is covered by the program. The program does not um, fund, however, any concrete project activities uh, here, so that is excluded. But what we offer is also uh, we are having a, a very interesting set of, of experts uh, together with uh, the secretary, but also as part of, of um, countries um, or, or regions, we, we uh, do have a variety of, of experts here, which we can bring to the table. Um, and these could then respond based on your needs, the topics you have selected, um, we are able to to provide you keynotes um, exchanges on these elements. We are also foreseeing here uh, that there is one facilitator assigned to each exchange that will accompany, let it be a long or medium or short uh, term exchange, the pairs uh, very ded uh, uh, dedicatedly, uh, um, uh, dedicatedly uh, at the preparation phase, at the implementation phase, but also at the evaluation phase of the exchanges. And last but not least, we would also like to build and connect um, not only to the activities of, of the principles which have been presented here, but also to other uh, instruments that are existing, um, such as TIEX and twinning for the later we are going to hear uh, shortly after um, uh, as part of the session also more details. So also here there, is, uh, there are opportunities that we are foreseeing um, to uh, to come to you after you have been delivering and have and enjoyed, as I said, um, this exchange program. Next slide, please. So let's prepare an application uh, for you to get uh, uh, more comfortable uh, in the application process. Next slide. So what should you do? As, as I said, um, and maybe uh, first of all, you should nominate a contact person, one person that that shall coordinate uh, the application process, but um, maybe even not only the application, but also the implementation uh, in case you get uh, you get chosen um, in the application. You shall define uh, your up to uh, seven person uh, delegation. And we are also giving uh, here also looking into the gender aspects, which came also yesterday very strongly in the panel discussion. So feel encouraged to um, also make a gender balanced proposal here of your delegation, uh, depending on stakeholders here involved. We would like in the application uh, that you highlight to us uh, your priorities, your challenges, your key interests. Um, and uh, these will be analyzed as well as your wish uh, of if you would like to pursue a long, medium or short term um, ex um, exchange. Next slide. So even more um, concretely, um, step one would be, as I said, form a delegation, um, if possible, led by a public authority from a coal region that would already give give emphasis and um, uh, give us the assurance that that uh, the, the public authority of that region is actually uh, here behind and uh, is willing to participate, is committed to to undergo this process. But as I said already, um, you may also uh, let a stakeholder of of that region apply with a letter of support from from that very region. Um, there are three different. Um, but aligned application forms, which you can choose from. So you don't need to get scared. You just need to complete one of them. One is in particular designed for whole regions in Western Balkan and Ukraine. They are also available in, in uh, several languages. So the language barrier should hopefully not hinder you to apply. Uh, then there is a, uh, an application form for EU regions, particularly here, uh, also hold in English. And there is a third option, which I would also very much like to, to highlight, where you have the possibility to propose a pairing already from your, uh, from your side. So if you are in touch with um, another core region or a front running region, um, talk to them and apply together. That is the opportunity here. Uh, maybe in, in, uh, 
uh, very importantly here to mention as as a last uh, element of this slide. Remember the 15th of September, because that is the day where uh, you should have submitted uh, one of these applications um, forms and uh, we are very much looking forward to it. Next slide. So I'm suggesting uh, you to use in particular uh, your network, um, your um, already uh, uh, your already potentially established connection to other European core regions, discuss this idea with them and then um, hand in potentially your application form. If um, you don't um, find a reason or haven't had the chance yet um, to network with other European core regions, then uh, don't, uh, don't feel hesitant. Please submit your application as, as your own regions and express your interest. Next slide, please. So what maybe um, going into the last um, and, and final steps here, what can you expect once you have been selected? Next slide. So a quick snapshot of how could a, a meeting agenda of an in-person meeting look like, uh, opening of the region, uh, a keynote um, from, a, from an expert, then maybe a panel with uh, with with representatives from both core regions here paired, uh, facilitated discussions uh, among the the delegates. Um, then then another keynote, for instance, uh, from um, from our experts. Uh, further further discussions. Uh, next slide, please. Where we could discuss uh, barriers, how to overcome them, uh, depending on on your uh, comfortable. Uh, if if you're comfortable to make this in interactive, we can find the right uh, format uh, for these um, for these interactions, which could also and should also, of course, provide you the po uh, possibility to have field visits, to have discussions with several stakeholders, maybe. Um, and then last but not least, if it's a longer or medium or short term uh, exchange, uh, we would like to, to capture with you lessons learned, uh, conclusions, next steps to follow uh, based on, on these exchanges. Um, that is uh, something which, which we would like to see. We would like to see and take you from, from that point of departure we, where you are and bring you at least one step uh, further in your transition process. Next slide, please. So having said that, there are many options uh, for you to go into depth, uh, to choose your, your interest and to exchange uh, on interests uh, that, that you have, that you would like to get more information out. These are just some suggestions from new governance models, from new stakeholder strategies uh, for, re uh, for the deployment of renewable energy, for instance, or how to um, foster skill development, reskilling, you name it. These are elements which you can express in the application form, and we will try um, to take care of your interest here and find uh, a suitable pair. Next slide. So I hope um, you are seeing this, this program and uh, you're seeing your region not as uh, the end in that sense of having built an infrastructure which is now available, which, which, uh, which the planet and, and our climate ambition says uh, need to be shut down. I think there are many opportunities also to exchange how your infrastructure could be uh, integrated, could be valued. Uh, let's discuss uh, the next steps on these and uh, next slide, please. And with that encouragement, I would like um, to point uh, out once again that this program is an opportunity uh, to build capacity, um, to learn about uh, what other regions have done, how they have done it, and um, how you may be able to, with the help of facilitators, with the help of, of experts here, uh, go steps further in the coal transition. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the questions. Thank you very much, Karsten. And um, just to remind you, anyone that has questions, please enter it into the chat. But I can start off with with uh, one that I've already received. Uh, so you've already mentioned that the local regional uh, public authorities are the priority applicants, uh, and you foresee them mainly in a um, leading role, but in a case where 
where they're not the applicants. You mentioned a letter of support. Is there anything you can say about the letter of support? Thank you. The letter of support, uh, yes, um, you may um, create this document uh, by yourself in the sense of um, the authority, the public authority should issue this letter uh, indicating on transferring clearly the, the mandate that um, the applicant the, uh, the research institute, for instance, is um, is authorized to apply in the name of uh, the public authority, and in that sense, also assuring us as uh, and uh, assuring the the European Commission that the application is is valid in that sense. And maybe even um, then, you can um, specify further of of um, the. Commit, uh, the commitment could be specified further of that region. What can it bring to the table? Um, what what capacities could be uh, um, could be provided by that region? And maybe even hinting why why the region doesn't apply uh, them, themselves. Um, these may have uh, quite practical um, uh, reasons here uh, behind. But uh, please make them transparent so we are able to analyze them and take them into consideration. Thank you. Uh, another uh, question about the regions and the idea of about the joint application you mentioned. Uh, what sort of hints could you offer maybe if, if an applicant region wishes to have a particular region to exchange with? What can they do to make this happen? As I said, I think uh, the, the first step is you, you grab the phone or uh, write an email and exchange uh, make, make that um, region which you know, which you would potentially like to pair with uh, due to your interests, um, make them aware of this of this program. Then, of course, uh, you could apply uh, either separately or jointly. In that sense, uh, maybe better to apply jointly um, so that these uh, applications are, are concretized. But um, one can also say that um, pairings um, are uh, to be confirmed um, by the European Commission based on their, of course, eligibility, uh, based on, on the availability also of funding, uh, because as I said, uh, we are foreseeing uh, 20 regions to be paired, but uh, we of course uh, would like to pair as much as possible, but of course would like, first of all, to get an overview of who would like uh, to get engaged. Okay. Uh, another question that has come to me. Uh, what are the next steps uh, after submitting an application? Uh, what what happens after that? Yeah. What what will happen? In uh, first of all, will uh, we will analyze um, the application um, as part of the secretariat? Uh, we will make an overview, provide that overview to um, the European Commission, who. Who would then uh, also confirm suggested pairings? Uh, once uh, that um, is is done, we will uh, get in contact, maybe also beforehand. Uh, but it depends on on the completeness of of an application um, to um, to explore further if the pairing uh, can proceed, and then eventually, of course. We are at the point of implementing uh, the exchanges based, uh, hopefully, on uh, catering on your uh, for your interest in terms of long term, medium term, and short term. Thank you. And I think uh, an interest also of getting back on the schedule. We'll entertain one more question, uh, and that would be, uh, what can be expected in the stages of an exchange? You talked about this briefly, but maybe a little bit more detail. Yeah, maybe what I would like to mention here again is uh, that we would like to accompany you and understanding this as a as a kind of um, journey where we would like to understand, first of all, and where the assigned facilitator would like to understand where you are, what what are your objectives uh, through this through this exchange program on what would you like to um, exchange about what, what would you like to get out of it and how could uh, these results feed and help you to uh, go further in your transition process. And once that is defined, uh, and that can be defined if we have, for instance, two, uh, if we have a, a long term exchange, this would mean two meetings. Um, but here, maybe we have a virtual uh, exchange uh, beforehand with with less persons, defining goals, then implementing the first uh, 
um, exchange physically and then of course we would evaluate um, how how did it go um, have the the objectives uh, for of that meeting being being reached how can the next meeting uh, be even more uh, fruitful or let it be uh, also with with the perspective of being it um, the the second and last of of that uh, exchange program how can we um, ensure that that our objectives of the entire exchange of that pairing uh, can be achieved. So there is a is an interaction in particular in the longer or medium term uh, process and a very important role for the facilitator to take care of this. Thank you very much. I already see that there's some some interest there. Uh, Irina has taken note of it for our own promotional purposes, but also here everybody can see there's already maybe one candidate of the municipality of Kichewa in North Macedonia. So you can all uh, contact uh, Tino Alexov there if you want to uh, pair up with them. And there will be plenty of other people. We have about 100 people here, so there will be lots of candidates. So go and find your perfect match. So thank you once again, Karsten, and we'll move on to the next section, which is with uh, Darius uh, Stenkevich. And Darius is, if you want, you can turn on your video, Darius, uh, is a project manager with over 20 years of experience in local economic development, especially related to the coal sector. And he's at present the head of the regional transition unit at the Marshal's office of Silesia. And for about the next, uh, 10 minutes or less, uh, we'll be talking about Silesian experiences and relevant exchanges that he has had and the, the region has had as well. So, uh, Darius, uh, maybe first off, uh, what I would uh, say is that we've spoken before and so I already know quite a bit about uh, your own experiences. Uh, you've been involved personally in numerous international exchanges related to Polish coal transition as a lead organizer and as an active participant. So what would you say have been the most concrete benefits gained from those experiences that you took part in? Uh, thank you, George, for, for the introduction, and I would like to welcome all the listeners. Um, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I can take part, part in this um, event. Um, ask me about the benefits. Um, I would have to say that um, behind actual exchange visits, there are uh, actual and concrete benefits, like when you are learning from uh, from the others, getting to know new cultures and ways of thinking, it provides you with a fresh perspectives, uh, which may uh, lead you to improve your your own activities. So this is beneficial for both sides. Uh, besides, we 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 are we we can be talking about prestige gained through uh, through exchange visits, and um, uh, the prestige besides uh, gaining recognition uh, for its own sake could attract visitors or even investments to your region. Uh, it also helps engage with stakeholders from both sides and get gather feedback. Uh, what is important. Uh, it may bring about creative and efficient ways to overcome challenges. We have a saying uh, uh, in Poland, which is uh, two heads is better than one. So when heads uh, collect or bring together, you can have better solutions. It also uh, uh, lets you find flexible approaches, good practice, exchange and networking activities that will grow out of those uh, uh, visits, I would say. Back to you, George. Thank you, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, I know that, for example, uh, you uh, you told me once about the the, uh, the US, uh, the US exchanges that you were leading and you had some concrete uh, things that came out of that. And these are also things that might come out of exchanges through our program. Would you just speak briefly about uh, naming what they are, you don't have to give details, but just to inspire others. Uh, so uh, let me tell you um, that personally, US visits were a great learning adventure for me in a personal, let's say, aspect. But then I, uh, back then I was, uh, I worked for the uh, US um, 
Department of Labor Workforce Development Program in Poland. And I was responsible for local economic development strategies, retraining schemes and study tours for the representatives of the Polish coal sector, including unions and state administration. Uh, among others, we traveled to uh, Jim Walters resource operation in Alabama to get a feel of an actual coal site and its intricate demethanization facility. We were also visiting uh, West Virginia Mine Health and Safety Academy in Beckley. Uh, we also met with um, labor market institutions to learn the employment programs and development agencies to learn how to develop sites for investors. These were unique opportunities for Pol Polish stakeholders to learn from the advanced technologies they used in the American mining industry, but also the health and safety techniques and technologies to improve safety standards in mining operations, which at that time was of crucial importance, as well as today, while we are getting ready to the uh, decommissioning of mines. Major results of the project was setting up a joint health and safety bureau and a postgraduate university programs, but also local economic initiatives and retraining schemes uh, for miners. I also had uh, experience with um, uh, study tours and exchange visits uh, to Ukraine when I was working for the Economic Development Agency in the city of Bitom. We were working together with the Ukrainian um, partners uh, to um, um, develop or working together towards investments in post mining and post industrial areas of both countries. And um, quite recently, actually this morning, I gave a speech at a virtual visit of an Ukrainian delegation. This was an event um, that is sponsored by the World Bank, mentioned here before the Institute of the Ecology of the uh, Industrial Areas in Katowice and the Central Mining Institute, and of course, the World Bank. Uh, within this project of exchange, I had a pleasure to uh, share the assumptions of our regional just transition plan, which is a great example of knowledge exchange in the area of science-based approaches to coal transition. Now, now that you mentioned the, the regional just transition plan, I, I remember that in one of our talks, you were also talking about uh, a different kind of dynamic you had in another exchange. So with the American exchange, you were very, very much in a learning rule, uh, but with uh, Romania, uh, you were in a, mentor role. But what can you say about that and the benefits that you still gained, even if it was you teaching? Uh, yes, um, we we had uh, our region in general has played an active role in the platform for coal regions in transition, where we shared our experience um, to help uh, regions like Juvali and Romain uh, and the um, uh, region of uh, Ostrava in Czech Republic. And this is where we were mentors, actually. And uh, as I said before, uh, it, it gives you a pleasure of sharing knowledge, but also you get knowledge from those who you mentored. Uh, in, this, in this respect, uh, there, there is a, a certain uh, bindage that is developing uh, between both sides. And um, we also, uh, under this platform for coal regions in transition, we, we also worked with um, uh, the area of uh, Asturias in Spain. Uh, on, in this respect, we were again learning to, from them because uh, transformation is well underway uh, in Asturias and I believe that the last coal mine is to be decommissioned this year. So it, it gives you um, uh, all sorts of dynamics. Um, uh, learning process is going beyond the program of the exchange visit. Uh, you can get unexpected uh, um, junctions and uh, you, you can meet unexpected counterparts uh, that you uh, learn uh, surprising things that you can use in your uh, daily work. So my vast experience from uh, from exchange tours is always positive. When you come back, you, uh, as they say, you have transformed and you're another man. It's very nice. I think those are nice concluding words. We can even say that 
uh, even though we're doing transitions for regions, that it's also personal transformations uh, are very important Definitely. and personal relationships, no matter what your role is, no, no matter what the dynamic is. Uh, well, thank you very much, Darius. Uh, I, th I think these were very nice to have uh, on the ground uh, from multi multi continent uh, perspectives. And uh, so thank you very much. So, I just I just wanted to add, Georgia, just the yeah. final final comment. We we are working with the U.S. consulate in in Poland. They they have been contacting us, and and uh, there is some sort of uh, cooperation also developing in this respect. So so we are continuing those uh, continuing this experience, and perhaps it will bring another benefits. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, long term exchanges, developing long term relationships. Right. So. Next up, we have uh, Rute Balthaus, who has many years uh, work experience. And uh, if you could turn on your video, please, Rute. She's been working at high levels of na national government and Latvia, and has been working the past 14 years for the European Commission in the area of energy policy and legislation, including international and regional cooperation. And she will now provide you a glimpse of her valuable work as a member of the energy team of the support group for Ukraine, a dedicated task force in the commission, which uh, is dedicated to the support of reform processes in Ukraine. In particular, she'll talk about the one of the existing EU instruments, the Twinning program, and w which targets national administrations and can therefore complement our own uh, program that we're launching now. So let's hear from Ruta more about uh, those benefits. Ruta, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Um, indeed, uh, we have uh, several instruments uh, of cooperation with our partner countries. And uh, one of the instruments, which was also mentioned uh, previously, which is a uh, short term uh, uh, expertise sharing, short term, short uh, leading times, is uh, TIEX, which is uh, also really can be uh, organized within a, a short period of time and uh, for one or two days. Uh, and for diff different uh, activities, but I think that what uh, I would like to present today is a twinning, so which is a long term uh, cooperation institution uh, instrument between institutions, and it really is 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 something that uh, goes beyond uh, uh, just uh, advice. So, and I think that it definitely is. Uh, very complementary to 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 uh, uh, the the instrument of the uh, secretariat. So uh, for 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 a similar cooperation at sub national level, uh, while involving also the the, the the regions and communities. Maybe we could go to the next slide. I think that what is you can see is that twinning. This is something which is uh, long term, day to day uh, cooperation with each other in the partner country, but not only in the partner country, but between countries and not only uh, between one country in the European Union can be even more and several uh, in institutions. And therefore, where you can see is that uh, we have uh, several layers uh, in a, a project. Yeah. So because, for example, project leader from the EU side is, is, is uh, stays in the country of origin, but goes regularly over so to, to the partner country. Uh, to audit, and and then uh, 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 we have a resident training advisor who is every day yeah, in the country, in the, in the partner country, and this is something, and they are actually working day to day together with uh, uh, on other side resident training advisor counterpart in the very uh, in, in in that uh, institution they are cooperating together together so. Uh, in the same location and 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 really cooperating hand in hand. So uh, and uh, uh, the third layer, which is even more interesting for everybody, is that uh, uh, the whole project can rely on a network of experts. You, you can uh, uh, mobilize depending on what is uh, necessary in that given moment. So uh, and and uh, because of course one person cannot know uh, everything and uh, if you are cooperating really together you are facing problems that uh, you cannot get have one answer you need someone who knows how to deal with it and the specific expertise uh, and to ask someone so and that's something which we see that on the human member state side we have 
uh, consortia, we have several institutions involved and also provides a network of experts the, 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 the project can um, uh, rely on. And uh, the residing training advisor is, is the key person also to find out what is what is useful, what is necessary, and where to find what the what the what the partner institution needs. So, and therefore, I think that what is for the coal regions is typical that, uh, <laughs> as, as for many others, that the transformation is not a one-day business, and uh, and 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 then you definitely need more than one someone telling how they did it uh, in their own country. You have to have the day-to-day -day cooperation to see how to deal with these problems and I think that the advantage of the training is indeed that uh, working together learning from each other but also you are talking to peer-to-peer -peer. so it's not just someone analyzing situation and telling to you what to do where it's a, a very valuable to have but you have experts of the similar institution of similar uh, mandate who has uh, helping you as 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 as, as uh, also on other side to deal with the, with the problems in the way you actually need uh, not from different perspectives and that is something which is I think has been very positive uh, experience um, for 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 project I think that one activity we are, did not participate that was even running uh, marathon together so it's uh, fine I think this is not only learning person uh, uh, each to each it's really learning from each other and helping you to 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 uh, address uh, the way how you do it no? so uh, and and this is not about uh, only about cultures it's not about knowledge it's also about uh, know how and the mentality and really approaches which 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 are, can be very useful for uh, both uh, sides maybe then what when we can go to the next um, slide i think that what is uh, typical also for for twinning is that um, the better it is prepared, the more uh, uh, the uh, partners can benefit from it. So, because that what is good, that of course we have uh, under the youth winning we have one partner in, in institution in in a country, but it's not the only beneficiary. So, for example, in in the renewable energy uh, uh, project um, uh, with with Ukraine, we had an agency on one side and Ukraine side. But there were very close cooperation also with uh, other institutions like statistical office, like uh, uh, ministries or like 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 uh, research institutes, so that you'd really create a system. Uh, so not only one fragment, but you're putting the puzzle together, which can really help. And I think that is something which which, which could be useful also for the coal regions. But that what is important also that on other side what we had, we had uh, agency, we had a regulator, we had uh, research institutes. So uh, also the this pool of experience, but focused and combined in a way in a package that helps to reach uh, really uh, specific uh, uh, results. It's not just uh, sitting and doing something like like like, but also the systemic results. So in in case of of of, of our training project, there was a lot of work on on, on regulatory side, which is of course classical uh, classical uh, task for 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 institutions. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, what was also important also to see for this implementation aspects, which are the most difficult ones. So, uh, and methodologies, which you cannot learn within one day or two days or to explain it. So that is something how you how you develop it, how uh, the experts work for you, but they work together with you so that you're fully capable to, 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 to do it yourself and also to other institutions learning from that. And also what I think in our case even helped in, 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 in Ukraine to bring more institutions together. So, and that was uh, uh, from in that country, I think that was a very valuable uh, element. And of course, uh, when it comes to access to information, which is often uh, um, uh, available, but nobody knows where. So uh, that is something which was also helping a specific uh, experience from research institutes uh, who had this experience and they could really help this institution. I think this is a very, very valuable uh, instrument. I think the only difference is to the uh, to the co regions is that uh, for uh, for the EU twinning uh, programs, uh, the involvement of the central institutions is, is, is very important. So because uh, this organization uh, of, of, of activities, uh, including study visits and then 
and so on goes to the central government. That is something, of course, a question between the relationship uh, of different institutions. But uh, as I said, on the EU side, it's extremely important to bring all stakeholders together. To, and uh, <laughs> the Commission will stay involved in the project to ensure it that is uh, that is uh, really taking place. It's not, uh, uh, and I think that uh, the, the the second. Uh, uh, the second second uh, difference is that uh, uh, this is going through a tendering procedure, so, which means that, of course, uh, the institutions who are involved in the preparation of the tent winning project in 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 the EU, uh, they they know. Uh, a lot, yeah. So, but uh, for 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 the project to reach the, the results is uh, the standing procedure to get the right, the best possible package. Uh, uh, for for the project, that is where uh, a commission is is, is building a commi uh, selection committee together with with a, with a partner uh, a country, uh, and that is my maybe that's something where it it it. But in in in, in the renewable energy uh, sector, it was a great project with a lot of positive energies and definitely going beyond uh, this two years period in incorporation. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. So I think this is a very useful insight that uh, you have presented, Ruta. So thank you for this. It shows the value of international exchange and that things can happen at a national level, which can complement the subnational level as we have in our program. So all of you can have this in mind that you can apply with our program and perhaps you can explore things that maybe even continue the relationship you find in our program and move it on to uh, a next step through twinning or maybe even TIEX. And you can, we can help you synergize that since DG NIR is uh, part of our, our uh, con consortium body uh, advising us on the, on the project. So uh, now to finally wrap things up, I will once again hand the floor back to my colleague, Karsten. Karsten, the floor is yours. Uh, well, much, George, uh, thank you, Darius. Thank you, uh, Ruta, for, for both experience, uh, for sharing the experiences that you had while undergoing uh, a similar processes using different instruments. But I think uh, we're much so also highlighting the benefits from both sides, if you are a mentor or a mentee, if um, you are um, a facilitator or an expert, um, depending on your role, uh, on the role you take, um, there are uh, quite a lot of benefits to reflect about um, one's own uh, processes of the just transition. So what I would like to uh, leave with you here uh, today in the closing of the session is the message that the door has just been opened uh, for you to apply here um, using the th uh, one of the three application forms. Um, approach us if you have any questions in how to complete them. Um, approach us if you have uh, further questions on, on maybe finding also pairs uh, beforehand, but uh, eventually also please take the initiative and use this program to um, to build on the contacts that you have or uh, create new contacts that you would like um, uh, to, to create uh, here through this wonderful exchange program. The deadline is the 15th of September. Uh, the links have already been shared. Please uh, take a closer look and get back to us. And with that, I'm handing over to Elodie. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carsten. Thanks also George and also Darius and Rita for your for your presentations on the, on the exchange program. So more to come in the coming month. Stay tuned, as we say. So um, thanks again. All right. I think it's time to slowly but surely close the close this meeting, this first annual meeting of the Initiative for Core Regions and Transition in the Western Balkans and Ukraine. And now I'm very happy and also honored to welcome on the stage, virtual stage, uh, Mr. Jerzy Buzek, who is member of the European Parliament and also a former Polish Prime Minister and also former President of the European Parliament. Mr. Buzek, please, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Madam. I understand that I am seen and you can hear me as well. So everything is okay in our connection. Fantastic. Well, I am very glad to listen to you. And thank you for the invitation. And uh, well, it took us two years, as a matter of fact, to be 
fully engaged from the side of uh, Western Balkans and Ukraine and your core regions in transition and with the support of uh, uh, international institutions to, to, to start such a project. I, I, should, I should tell you that two years ago, I tabled a budgetary amendment in my committee, uh, each a committee within parliament, uh, each means uh, industry, uh, uh, research and energy. And uh, I proposed the uh, initiative for coal regions in transition, such a preparatory action, not only for the member states or 27 member states of the European Union, but also with our neighboring countries. And uh, we had to uh, widen uh, our geographic scope together with our, our budgetary possibilities. And the proposal was supported by my colleagues from European Parliament and became part of the EU 2020 budget and is now be, being implemented by the European Commission together with six partners. So congratulations to you, to your six partners. And I am saying European Commission, uh, which is uh, leading institutions and financial institutions, European and, and uh, international uh, World Bank, for example, and also some, some uh, institutions from Poland, College of Europe in Italy, it is not financial institution, but I think very helpful for you. And let me say, it's a special day, uh, just today, probably you, you didn't know about that two or three months ago, uh, trying to, to plan and to organize an annual meeting of the initiative for core regions in the Western Balkans and Ukraine. Uh, but now, a few hours ago, we voted in European Parliament for our climate law. Incredible um, success, because um, <clears throat> we've got our a cornerstone document of the European Green Deal and uh, European cl climate law. It means the political commitment to make the EU the world's first climate neutral continent by 2050 became a legal obligation. That's great. Yeah. And uh, European continent is not just the EU, as you know very well. The Western Balkans and Ukraine are its inevitable parts. And uh, all of you uh, belong to the energy community and de facto you are part of the energy union. And also, uh, it is very important for us, for the member states from the European Union, uh, that uh, Europe can reach the climate goals only if the EU cooperates with the candidate countries and its neighbors, as well as supports them in different paths to a carbon neutral economy. It is not easy for us as well. And we know very well that some of your countries uh, started much uh, later than some member states in the European Union. So let me say, the initiative for co legions in transition in the Western Balkans in Ukraine uh, is a good starting point for such assistance, but the EU should do more by providing such, uh, well, more, more initiative. First of all, political support. I think it is very important our discussion uh, take part in all the discussions and exchange in view, uh, of views in, in uh, Western Balkans and, and Ukraine on such a topic. And uh, mm, taking into account, first of all, you know, the commitment and different starting points uh, of you, uh, partners from, from um, Western Balkans and Ukraine. And very important, of course, as usual, is financial support. For the Western Balkans, we've got a green agenda for the Western Balkans and the connected to each economic and investment plan for the Western Balkans. For Ukraine, uh, we should um, uh, go forward with technical assistance, uh, energy efficiency fund, 
uh, continuous financing is absolutely necessary, and uh, all the all the mechanisms for blending and guarantee uh, cooperation with international financial institutions, and of course creation of special dedicated funds supported by the EU and international financial institutions. I know very well your program. I've got some information on your discussions as well, and I know the. This is the second day, just just today, uh, financial and European institutions. Uh, you are leading, being moderator of the panels, very important. But uh, yesterday, you had in program, as a matter of fact, exchange of views uh, between the regions. It's always the most important. We started in the similar way. We should take into account that um, some EU countries like Germany, well, started the exit from coal 50 years ago. I would say that uh, probably Denmark, France, even earlier, maybe 60 years ago, uh, uh, from, from, from the point of view of my country, uh, well, it was not so many years ago, maybe 15, 20 years ago, we started seriously to think about that. Uh, so uh, thanks to the initiative, uh, you have an opportunity uh, to get to know, let's say, our experiences. Uh, they are very fruitful. And uh, in our cooperation between the member states of European Union, for example, between Basque region in Spain and my, my home region, Upper Silesia in Poland, it's also very fruitful to support how we can go forward, how to organize ourselves, and uh, I would like to strongly encourage you to learn from the best practices. You've got your own practices and adjust this knowledge to your reality and decide on your reforms. Reforms are always the most important. And I think it will be the same in your, in your case, but also the most difficult issue. They could uh, make your economies um, economies future proof and more resilient, but more importantly, they should make the future of our next generations better, healthier and safer. Our main program for the next two, three years um, is entitled New Generation of EU. We are discussing all the time uh, the conditions for the next generation of the whole Europe and uh, conditions for life, for being happy on our continent. So I wish you all the best because the transition and especially energy transition is the most powerful from the point of view of our future and could be very helpful for our industry, for our transport and also for our um, uh, agriculture as well, because we should uh, uh, transmit all our sectors to new era without emission. We are without CO2 emission. All the best to you and thank you very much once again for invitation. Thank you so much, Mr. Brzezik. Thank you very much for your very inspiring words and um, yeah, thanks also to, to share this uh, important and good news about the climate law for today, so. Sorry, if I might say, sure. it's a very hot in my country. So I'm swearing all the time. I see that you are probably in a much better situation, much better situation. So you see warming is present around of us. Thank you very much, great. That's true. Thank you very much, Mr. Buda. Indeed, in Brussels, it's quite gray and a bit chilly for a similar summer day. But uh, indeed, we're keeping in mind of the 24th of June uh, 2021, which is a milestone also for, for climate uh, law and also uh, maybe a lucky charm date for the initiative for core regions and transitions in Western Balkans and Ukraine. And uh, yeah, I took note of the yeah, exchange, sharing and learning from each other is really key um, when, when it comes to energy transition. So thank you again, Mr. Brzezik, for, uh, for coming here and for uh, intervening with these uh, concluding remarks. 
So yeah, it's five. I think it's it's time to wrap up and to simply thank all the all the speakers of today, uh, all the uh, the audience. Thank you for your active also participation in the chat. Um, I saw many many questions also and changes, and that's really nice. Uh, even though it's a virtual meeting, I was very pleased to to moderate that uh, that event. Um, I would like also to to thank the interpreters. Uh, we are having um, ten languages also uh, live now, so uh, I would like to thank them warmly. They have done a terrific job, and they are really um, key also in making this uh, this event successful. Um, last but not least, I would like to thank the whole um, team from the Secretariat, especially Victoria, Natalia, Sandra, and Irina. Uh, they have done a terrific job also in bringing together all. All the speakers and uh, promoting the, this event. It's a digital event. It's always uh, there are many people also behind the screens, so um, they should also um, be um, uh, yes praised. I think for their uh, terrific job. So thanks again all, and see you next time. If you have any questions regarding the initiative, don't hesitate to send an email to the secretariat. It's uh, secretariat w b u a at coregions.eu. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Thank you, Secretariat. Thank you, all of you. Great. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much.